may remember me from my television shows in the 1980s and 90s. And now, I host a regularly live-streamed virtual magic showcase featuring some of the greatest magicians in the world. Welcome to Dr. Michael's Friday Night Wizard Emporium. What a pleasure it is to have you join us here uh, in Facebook land and in our virtual audience as well. We have an amazing lineup. I'm very, very excited about, well, I'm always excited about our lineups every month, but this one is particularly jam-packed with some people who haven't been here and some regulars that you've requested that return. So we're very, very excited to present our very first uh, performer, and he's somebody that I first met almost 30 years ago on the streets of Vancouver. I first saw him as a street magician. He looked so good. And as I recall, he produced a dove. Who does that outside on, on the streets? And he just looked so amazing, so professional. I never forgot him. Let's put our hands together right now for Donovan Edward Wirt. Sorry, uh, my name is Donovan. I've been doing, uh, and I performed under the name Donovan Atreides for about 30 years. Um, I was born here in Canada. I grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada, where I had the privilege to study under some of the world's finest magicians. Um, I, I, my mentor was a guy named Gary Darwin down in Las Vegas. And I, uh, I walked Jimmy Grippo to his car every week for three years before he started teaching me some stuff when I was young. Um, so I grew up in Vegas there and I was really fortunate to study under some really good magicians. Uh, back in, it was around 1980 or 81, we had a Japanese magician come from um, Japan there. Uh, his name was Shigeo Furugawa. And he took some time to teach me an effect that I've been doing for the past 40 years. And uh, here I'll show you, it's got this little leather bag I carry this in, but it's an old, uh, Japanese pill container and uh, show what I keep inside of here is four silver dollars. I'm just going to show you that the uh, box is solid here. Nice. Made out of solid brass. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put one, two, three, four coins in the box. Put the lid on the box. Now watch. All I have to do is wave the wand over the top, give it a little tap, and all the coins disappear. Now this part takes a lot of practice. Watch. I wave the wand over the top, I tap it, and look, the coins come back. Okay? Isn't that amazing? No, I'm just kidding. Look, we have four coins in a little box here. Watch. I'm going to take the first coin. Let me pull my sleeves back. So you know I'm not cheating here. I'm going to take the first coin, give it a little squeeze, wave the wand over my hand, tap the box like that. First coin goes like this. And there's coin number one. Second coin, take coin number two, give it a squeeze, wave the wand over the top, go little tap. Second coin. Inside the box. Coin number one, coin number two. Coin number three, we're gonna do it just like Chris Angel on, on television, except with no camera tricks. Watch close. Three coins here. One, two, three. I was going to do just like this. Call this one the beast bash. Bash. We were like this. Watch. We go here. Wave the hand over the top. Go like this. Watch. Six, six, six. Gone. And the coin goes. All four coins. Thank you very much. 
fantastic, Donovan. Stick around for a few seconds. Wow. Uh, it's been such a long time since I've seen such experts, and I don't want to embarrass you, such expert coin work. Oh. Um, <laughs> it, it's uh, it's honest, honest, honestly, I, I'm not just trying to be nice. It's amazing. My <laughs> wife guy. was watching. My wife was watching off camera. And she knows every. She knows a lot of stuff, and like her mouth hung open and. <laughs> She gasped. She literally gasped. I had to uh, mute myself because I knew she'd react to, uh, to how incredible you are. Um, I want to say flawless, but I don't want to embarrass you as well. That, that is embarrassing. Um, uh, you, you saved me a lot of questions. You gave uh, background information right at the beginning. And, and I'm yeah. thinking, wow, I thought I knew all that about you, but you gave even more. And it's really really impressive credentials. So how how long would you say you've been performing? Uh, this coming November will be 50 years. Crazy. You're just a little boy. You must have started when you were <laughs> like 10 or something. I, I started doing magic when I was quite young. I was five when I started doing magic. And I got introduced to Darwin's Magic Club in Las Vegas when I was 10. And right away, Gary started booking me out because I already had five years of practice already in, right? So he started sending me off the first gig he sent me to was a gig at McDonald's for 20 bucks. I was just, wow, $20 in, in 1980. That was a lot of money. Oh, <laughs> you know sure. I mean? So it was, so, but I, between him and Earl Cheney in Las Vegas, um, he runs Mr. Clown suitcase. Um, but those guys had me working all the time, all over the strip. And, uh, you know, all, all through my teens, I was doing these high end corporate gigs, you know what I mean? So it was, it was very good. Yeah, just yeah. amazing. Um, for me, um, as a musician and magician, people used to say about myself or other people, oh, he's natural born, naturally gifted. But not only are you naturally gifted, you have this natural flair, this ability, this belief that the magic is real. It's telegraphed unconsciously to us as well that there's some real magic going on, but you've also honed your skills. It's one thing to be naturally adept at something. You could be a natural born singer or guitarist or whatever, a magician, but you've honed it. And, and it's this razor edge perfection, uh, in my opinion, my humble opinion. You're, 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 very, you're, you're very kind. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's true. And I, I will, uh, how can people contact you if they want to reach you? Uh, just call me on my cell phone. I, I actually run a vape shop. Is is I, I'm set, I, I considered myself retired from magic some years ago, and that was mostly after, especially when COVID hit. It was just like I did a bit of promotion back in the '90s, and that's all I did. I did like I, I just I did a little bit of work for about nine months. I rode that wave for like 15 years, hand out some promo packs, had some agents, and. I worked for a long time off of that, and then it just started to fade off. But I was I was doing other things, like I was working in a treatment center, helping guys get clean. I did that for a number of years. I worked with high risk drug addicted youth. Uh, I worked in foster homes for about ten years, so I was very busy for a big, about a twenty year period. So the last twenty years, the magic just kind of ebbed off, right? I still practice every day, right? But uh, yeah, so I just uh, and I just started getting back into doing stuff again, you know. I got my friend Greg Beatlin, uh, who, who was my promoter throughout the 90s. He, he booked all my lectures and all that. And he, um, he he got me to come back and do this thing for the Vancouver Magic Circle. And I, it was out of the blue. I was like, what? <laughs> you know, they want to see me do some magic? And I was like, I was so nervous. I, like, yeah, sure? I still, 50 years, I still have the worst stage fright ever. Today, I did not because I thought, well, I'm just doing, I'm doing a trick I've been doing for 40 years. So I wasn't too freaked out. I was more worried about whether the, the Zoom stuff would mess up or something, right? So it looked but, great. And I want to thank you one more time. If people want to reach uh, Donovan. Oh, sorry. You can he, he does have a Facebook page as well. Donovan Edward Wirt. Is that right? Or is it? Yeah. Uh, and you can you can call me on my cell phone, which is 604-807-8888. Excellent. And we'll put that as a title at the bottom uh, when I post this to YouTube. Donovan, thank you so much for agreeing to come on my show. Thank and you so much. And I hope you'll come back. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's hear it again for Donovan. Donovan Edward Wirt. 
I'm excited to introduce this next gentleman. He is not just a gentleman, he's a wizard. He, he truly is. He's no stranger to this virtual stage and to many other stages. Um, let's put our hands together right here, right now for the amazing Paul Abbey. Well, thank you again. I can't believe this. It's a month now since I did the last show. And welcome back to my home here in Surrey in UK, in the UK here. I was out today, this afternoon. It's actually getting brighter. Uh, we're looking forward to the spring and the summer and I race back to get ready for my show here tonight. So welcome to my home. Now, what I'd like to do is show you something which actually happened to me today. So I'm going to bring you over to my sofa here and bring you in nice and close so you can see what's going on. So isn't it really annoying when you're walking around and you suddenly need some cash? We're going into a bit of a cashless society now, making things a little bit difficult. And I went to the cash machine. And I got out what we call a fiver, five pound note here in the UK. It wasn't enough. I couldn't get any more money out. Really, really annoying. And this is a little thing that us magicians do or can do. Let's just bring you down here a little bit so you can see this a little bit better here with this note. So this is really good when you're traveling abroad as well. I'll show you how this works. Now, this little thing is based on origami. So watch very, very closely. Here we go. So we're going to take the note, we're going to fold it once and watch the fold. And then we're going to fold it twice. But look, I fold it up. Mm, this is a bit strange. And then we're going to fold it this way. But there's all reason for this because mm, it's this magic. Is it a trick or is it just an illusion? I'll ask you about that afterwards. Then you snap your fingers. And then as you start to unfold it, it changes. I don't know whether you can see here, but not only is it just changing, but it's changing shape, size, color denomination and ends up looking like one of these great big pink notes that we call 50 pounds <laughs> now i don't know if you noticed but if you can see this very clearly on the screen here this note is looking a bit strange can you see the corners mm -hmm. okay show you the back as well corners a little bit kind of dog head on the corners here um you might notice the line down here this is normally has a silver strip on it but you see this is a little bit weird this note there's a reason for this that when I do magic, I've got a very, very good friend of mine up in the Treasury, up in the uh, the uh, Bank of England, the Royal Mint, as we call it over here in the, in the States, you call it the Treasury, we call it the Royal Mint. <clears throat> and the reason being is we've got plastic notes now, which have kind of been pretty much used all over the world. And these have to be tested. So this friend of mine, he gives me notes to go and test them. Oh, yeah. And these can be tested to destruction. Now, I have to sign for them. I can't give them away. I can't spend them. I can, however, sign them and give them to people to put up on their wall, put in a frame or whatever, but they mustn't spend it. And they have to sign a form in triplicate to make sure that they don't do it. So what I also do is, I don't know if I should do this. Uh, I teach people how to do this trick. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know this is sacrilege because we're all magicians here. Oh dear, I can see people's hands going onto their foreheads. This is really bad. But hey, hey, you know, I think it'll be all right. I think I might be able to get away with this, but I'm going to ask you all to promise not to give this away because if you do, I'm going to get kicked out the married school, the, the magic circle and the Society of American Magicians. And oh, it's going to be terrible. It's going to be dreadful. So please keep it a secret. OK, I'm going to show you how I did it. What you didn't see was my hand went off screen very briefly and I had the other note in my hand. Oh, yes, it's simple as that. And I had it in a very, very secret grip. It's called the double index finger grip. It's a very, very special magical grip. Yeah, it's very old. It's about 200 years old, this special double finger index grip. And I have to keep it there. Can't show you it, obviously, because it's a secret. This is what you do. The origami bit is very important. You have to fold it exactly right. You have to fold it this way. Then you fold it up. Then what happens is, you get the other note and you pull it out and then you fold this one up behind it like so. So guess what? At some point you actually have mm -hmm -hmm, two notes. Yeah. OK, come on. Is it real magic? Is it a trick or is it an illusion? Well, let me show you the next bit. This is the really difficult bit. The difficult bit is to make people think it changes by magic. And then you've got to get rid of the other note and you shove it away. And remember that move It's a double finger middle index grip. You can look it up in a book somewhere, somewhere. And then you unfold it this way. Now, as you start to unfold it, it's very important not to open out your hand because if you do it, it drops out. It's very bad. 
okay the other thing you've got to do is when you open this up is don't open up your fingers because if you open up your fingers and they see through the gap that really ruins the trick you know what i mean and the other thing you mustn't do of course if you're going to do this trick is whatever you do don't turn your hand over because if you turn your hands over they'll see how it's done it kind of screws it up messes it up ruins the whole thing <laughs> you still with me okay i'm going to show you another final little thing to do with this because a lot of people say to me yeah but you know we're going into a cashless society now and there must be still fraud and things like that around yeah there is and there's a really really cool thing you can do to check whether a note is fake or not okay and again this is probably really really dodgy but i'm going to show you because i've got a pen in my pocket somewhere and i'll show you how this works you can all try this a bit later depending on whether you've got one of these pens here now this is a a, a permanent marker and uh, it says it on there somewhere uh oh it's rubbed off oh, okay anyway so you've got a permanent marker and the whole idea is we're going to take the marker pen and i'm going to show you what you do with this pen the whole idea is you're going to take the point of the pen and you've got to be very careful as you do this. you've got to get it centered and you slam it straight through the middle of the note now if it does this <laughs> this is really quite good because it means that that note is real oh yeah it means it's real if it's fake and you can rip it and it doesn't tear that's really bad and you might just need to take that to the bank and change it oh yes I'm very, done. Good. <laughs> very good paul wow so clever thank you so <laughs> much for sharing that with us it's, it's always a joy and right, so. It's always a mystery as well when you uh, when you share your your magic. Um, one thing that we have in common, and and we've known each other for a few years anyway, is martial arts. I've been oh, yeah. a, a Tai Chi aficionado and Kung Fu um, as well, and Qigong or Qigong um, for at least twenty years or more. And and you do that? Whoa, that yes yes how crucial is that that that's so important you've got a whole health system in itself with qigong but don't get me going uh i want to get you going a little bit how important i know the answer to this how important is your we'll call it martial arts practice because it is to your magic to your performance oh very much so uh i teach magic as you know uh and i've just been absolutely delighted to return back to london uh to do my course uh, uh magic for performance again after a five-year hiatus and uh and i indeed use the the physical skills uh that we do in in tai chi and movement because it's all about body discipline on stagecraft uh and being able to uh, breathe properly the, the breathing particularly in the qigong is very very important when you're speaking and you're projecting your voice a lot of people get that wrong and they think it's just about shouting it isn't um i remember a most amazing experience many many years ago um when i watched uh uh charlton heston on stage uh, came to britain and he did manful seasons and uh they didn't have the 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 microphones or the or the headpiece microphones then he just had to use his ambient voice and this voice just bellowed it was just so powerful and you could hear it right up in the gods and he wasn't shouting it was just purely power breathing diaph uh, diaphragm work yeah it was fantastic so amazing so amazing let's say people want to get in touch with you maybe for bookings or whatever uh paul how can they contact you easiest thing in the world my name's pretty unusual paul abbey a b b e y all you've got to do is just google my name and it pops up everywhere i've got a, a site with paul abbey digital biz dot cards uh, if you can't find that i'm on facebook if you can't find that uh, then just literally uh, email me uh, which is paul abbey a b b e y dot guess where uk at gmail.com pretty excellent easy. <laughs> excellent thank you so much for agreeing to come back i hope you'll join us My again pleasure on a future show a pleasure to have you paul take care let's hear it for paul abbey one more time thank you dr michael thank you i'm excited to introduce our next act um 
there's so much I could say about this person, and and it's all honest, and it's all good stuff too. Um, Robina is part of uh, the Tuesday Night Magic uh, Theater and also the Open Mic Magic uh, Show, which I highly recommend you look up on Facebook if you don't already attend it or even participate. You have to check it out. It's on twice a week, the Tuesday night and the Wednesday night. And Rabina is a regular. And um, we love, we love watching her. It's always colorful. It's always beautiful. And uh, of course, mystical and magical as well. We have her on tape. She's agreed to uh, give us permission to show her on tape. So let's please put our hands together for Rabina the Enchantress.
fantastic. That was Robina the Enchantress, and you can、uh, see her every Tuesday.、Uh, there she is. Thank you for joining us. I want to、uh, give you a little bit of a plug there. Tuesday night magic theater on Wednesdays open mic. Uh, magic show. Thank you so much for、uh, joining us this day, Robina. How are you? Oh, I am. I am doing quite well, thank you. I I always love coming to your shows, and it's even more exciting when I get to participate. And it's、yes. watching the the video. The rings are my absolute favorite routine to do. So I got to pull one out of the archive and say, "Here, we'll show you this one this time." So. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it. I'm sure they did. That's one of my favorites as well.、Uh, and for those of you out there, in case you haven't guessed, it's not easy. It <laughs> requires so much practice.、Um, I don't know how you do it, Rabina. I don't mean the the effects, but you pretty much come up with at least two different routines just about. Every week, and my wife and I, we were chatting about that, and I thought that's that's a lot of work, and、uh, on so many levels. How do you do it? I have no life other than doing magic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's always a pleasure.、Um, can people contact you other than Facebook, or is that the best place to reach you? Well, I have a website which is robinamagic dot com. And actually, you can find the link to both the Tuesday and Wednesday shows on here.、Uh, and send me an email anytime. I'm always looking forward to talking to people and sharing magic with them. Super! Always a pleasure and an honor. Thank you so much for coming on my show、uh, this time. I look forward to seeing you Tuesday and Wednesday. Let's put our hands together for Robina the Enchantress. And she is. She is. I'm very excited about our next segment. It's also、uh, pre-recorded, or, or in the old days we'd say it's on tape. But now with digital magic,、uh, we refer to it as something else.、Um, uh, Michael. Yes, sir. Uh, it, uh, Roy, next. It's Roy. Oh, we've、yeah. switched. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you for that. That was the voice of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> the voice from the gods. It's gone. <laughs> It echoed throughout the castle. Oh, thank you so much for that,、um, Kevin. That's Kevin Peel, the the brains behind all of this. I'm going to embarrass you, Kevin, by saying to everybody, without him, there wouldn't be this show. He's he's really the the heart and the technical、uh, heart of this show. I'm excited about Roy, Roy Stone, who、um, also was a regular, pretty much. On the Tuesday night magic theater and the Wednesday night or、uh, open mic magic show,、uh, I'm always entertained. I know you will be too if you haven't seen him yet. Let's put our hands together for the great Roy Stone. Hey, up, Middlesex. Well, for those of you who don't know, I'm from a little pit village in England, so that's why I don't speak correctly. Well, it happened again.、Uh, those who know me know I'm a bit of a、um, Sucker for these street street scammers, you know that do these bets in the streets. And、uh, it happened to me again the other day. I was walking down the road,、uh, and I saw a guy. I said, "What are you doing?" He said, "Oh, I'm just doing some bets. Do you fancy having a bet?" I said, "What's it going to cost me?" He said, "Well, chuck in a ten pound note, and you can have a go." I said, "Well, but what I'm going to?" He said, "Look, I guarantee that you're going to win a prize at the end. I guarantee you're going to win a prize." He said, "What we've got here?" He says, "If you beat me," he says, "What what I will do?" He says, "I will write you." If you can see that, a blank check. I try checkbook. <clears throat>、uh, so I said, "Okay, I'll have a go." He said, "Right, what we've got? We've got a few things." He says,、uh, "We've got a little prediction message box there. We've got the prize that I think you're going to win. I've already predicted what prize I think you're going to win." He says, "And、uh, we've got some cards." He says, "Look, he gave him the cards. He said, 'Give them a good mix-up.' I gave him a shuffle.、Uh, I gave him a good mix-up, like so." He says, "Tell you what," he says, "Just put the cards." Back in the box for now, so I put the card back in the box because I don't want you to think I'm going to cheat、uh, with the card. So I put the card back in the box. He says, "Don't forget, we've got the prediction、uh, and we've got the prize that I think you're going to win. You are going to win a prize." And he says, "Don't forget, if you do beat me, you get I'll write you a check out my blank out my checkbook." I said, "Okay." He said, "Right, okay, let's start." So he he got the cards out. 
need the box again. <coughs> it says, uh, you might notice these cards have all got different numbers on. From 1 to 13, it says, because we're going to play the unlucky card trick. Um, it says, so that's why they've got numbers from 1 to 13. So he spread the cards. He said, pick any card you want. So I picked a card there. I picked a random card there. Totally random cards. And I picked a card there. He says, right, okay, the game has begun. Chance to win the big prize. He said, one of these cards has got a prize written on it. I guarantee you it's got a prize written on it. But your task is to find that card. So he turned the cards over. I've got a number five, a number 12, and a number two. So there's five, a 12, and a two. He said, which one do you want to start on? I said, I'll start on the five. He said, right, we're going to eliminate the unlucky cards. So he says, from five, we're going to count to 13. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13. He says, this helps us to mix the cards up. Chance for you to win the prize. So which one do you want to go next? So I'll go 12. So he says, 12, one card, 13. That's just finally two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. No cheating there. I did that in my answer. I knew there was no cheating. He says, right, now we've eliminated the unlucky cards. Chance for you to win the prize. We're going to add the numbers up. I'm going to go to any card at any number at that number so we've got 12 and 5 17 and 2 which makes 19 is and that will be your prize card so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 the 19th card is your card prize he says it was all fair wasn't it i said yep it all seemed fair i did it all seemed fair he said i guarantee you that you would win a prize this is where the scam came in he took away the 10 pound note he says your pride is you won nothing i thought i've been, I've been cheated again haven't I? i've been cheated he said no no he said i promised you that if you if i didn't guess that you were going to win nothing in this envelope then you i would write you a check out of my checkbook and you can have any amount you want. So he tore away the envelope and inside he said, look, what I've got here, I've got a little older and inside it is nothing. There's nothing inside it. He said, but remember, we had a prediction also. He said, so I take out the prediction and these are the instructions for your prize. And on it, it said nothing for the person who has everything. He opened it up and he said, read it. and says nothing for the person who has everything. Instructions. Carefully open the packet. So I did that. And experience nothing. Contents. The sound the contents are the sound of one hand clapping, a hole in a donut, the thing that goes bump in the dark, the sound of a tree falling when no one is listening, the incident that no one talks about, the bashful achievement, and this also comes with a warranty. This product is guaranteed to do absolutely nothing. If something happens, return it for a full refund. Ah, warning. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. If you swallow nothing, please consult a psychiatrist as soon as possible. He says, so unfortunately, he says, uh, you didn't win the prize. He said, remember, though, I did say that I was going to give you a blank check. More than that, I was actually going to give you cash. So it looks like I got scammed again, Mr. Dr. Michael, thank you. <laughs> That's fantastic. Fantastic, Roy. And parts were quite profound as well, I must say. <laughs> One of the reasons why I love watching you, Roy, is because you're fun to watch. Um, you, you provide a combination of humor. You're, you're just fun to watch. You're interesting as well. And a little bit mystifying as well. The, the tricks, I hate to call them tricks, we'll call them magic effects that you produce, that you do. Uh, stumpers, they're, they're really, really, really cool. And in my humble opinion, that's the secret to a great performance. You've got it, is that you're entertaining naturally, just naturally. You naturally have it. And the tricks are stumpers. There's probably another term for it, but that's what comes to mind right now. I, I what I, I tend to do is when I've got a show either on the Tuesday, Wednesday, I go in a box, I look around all the tricks, I pick up five or six effects 
Uh, so this is a giveaway that I give away in my show sometimes. Nothing, it's just a joke. Uh, it's just a thing. Uh, I pick up five or six effects, and then I build a story. And th that afternoon, I will build a story. I will tie them all together, uh, talk about a scam or talk about a thing. So I, I make it up on the day, and I'm not a script and That's how I work. I'm more a, a hands-on, spur-of-the-moment person with my magic. Very cool. How long have you been into magic? Uh, oh, well, years. I mean, uh, I've seen magic for years because um, I was a red coat, which is a holiday camp entertainer in England. Uh, so I saw a thing. I've, I've seen, uh, I've worked with Tommy Cooper and uh, Ken Dodd and different people like that. So I've seen it. But I've actually only been really doing magic for maybe about eight, nine, ten years. Uh, and the last last year I got into the magic circle. So that was a great achievement. So, it is. Yeah, so yeah. I've, I've pretty compared to some of the great talent on here tonight. I'm relatively new on my journey in magic, um, but and, and I, I perform trade shows, weddings, parties, this and other. And I try to be different. I don't do a lot of tricks that the, the the rope routines, a lot of tricks that people do. I like to be different and just do my own style. That you are. You're unique. You're funny. You're mystifying. And I'm so thankful that you've agreed to come on my show this week. Um, I see on your graphic there how people can contact you. But let's uh, let's reiterate. Let's mention the website or email where folks. Yeah, can... it's uh, Roy Dash. If, if you just Google, put Roy Stone. I'm the only one. So put Roy Stone Magic. You'll find me on Google. It'll take you to my website. Uh, you can find my website. You can find all my Facebook pages. Just Google Roy Stone Magic and I will I pop up at the top. Perfect. Again, thank you so much, everybody. Let's put our hands together for the great Roy Stone. Thank you for thank, having me. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Well, I'm excited to introduce our next person who is actually on video and doesn't really exist anymore. Mm, there's a stumper. Um, we have his son in the audience, um, a friend of mine. I consider him a good friend. I've known him through our local Society of American Magicians, Ring 95, not Ring, ooh, that's the wrong club, Assembly 95. And his dad is a legend. I'm going to cheat a little bit. He's given me this comic book which will not come out it will never come out of this plastic wrapper there really is or was a mandrake the magician not just a comic strip it was a real life touring magician and whatever it is you've ever seen in the world of magic he's either done it or created it and his son one of his sons is here tonight um his son is a is a mentalist in his own right and he's given me permission to show a brief video of his father doing one of my favorite routines. So we're gonna turn that over to our techie, Kevin Peel, to the video, Mandrake the Magician. I have found a way to show you my familiar little Katie King. First, I need a steel ring, a force field to protect me. Something you can see, a tangible object, this, a tiny square of silk, which I will transform into a little spirit or a little ghost. And of course, the only spirits we ever become acquainted with always come in bottles. <clears throat> you notice I have a large glass bottle so my spirit will feel at home. Should I tie a knot in one corner of the silk, I would, of course, form a head. Forming at the same time, one ear is all good little spirits should have. Now we place this down inside of the bottle. And as long as the bottle remains tightly corked, we don't have a... <clears throat> yes. You have to keep the cork in the bottle. The spirit... Here, you get, get back in the bottle. Go on. You get back in the bottle when you're told. You want you, you want to come out? All right. Come on out then. Come on out here on the table. Oh, come on now. Oh, don't be bashful. Look, they're very friendly out there. That's it. Now stand up nicely, Katie. And the girl, bow to the audience. Yeah. Kitchy. Kitchy-coo. Kitchy, kitchy, kitchy. Come here. 
Katie, you come here. You you come here. They're very strong, you know. You have to... Uh... Oh, come on. Look, I'll go over here. I won't touch you. Huh? Come on, Katie. Come on. Oh, come on. Be that. Be a nice girl. Come on. Look, I won't touch. Put my hand behind my back. Huh? Now, stay. That's it. Now, here. Stand up. Would you care to sit down, Katie? Hmm? All right, lie down. And sit up. Stand up. Walk over here to the bottle. Walk along. She's a dainty little thing. Okay. Come, you come. Katie, you... You got... You come here. Now, you have to hang on to the music. Mm-hmm. I know. Let's see. Here's a steel ring. Glass bottle. Small square of silk. Come on, Katie. Come on. All right, let's jump through the... Jump through the... Hop, through the... Through the hoop. You're not doing all well, Katie. Nice big jump. Well, don't knock yourself out. Now, just take it easy. You're too old for that sort of thing. Come on back over the hoop. Come on. That's a girl. There. Got a little tired. You like to swing, don't you? Hmm? Hmm. Well, I can't swing you all day now. Come on. That's it. And there we go. Mandrake the Magician, the original Mandrake the Magician. I'm just wondering if uh, we have Lon in the audience. I believe he's there. I don't uh, know if we can call him up and maybe unmute him as well, but it would be great if we can chat a little bit. I don't know if you are there, Lon. Um, but his dad, the original Mandrake the Magician is just a wealth of amazing things. There you are, Lon. How are you today? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Terrific. Thank you so much for allowing me to to share that with uh, with the audience. For some, they've probably never seen that version. And as in my honest opinion, not just to be nice, it's the best. It's the absolute best because it's it's got character. The little uh, dancing spirit has character and actually your dad had the, the spirit going through a uh, hoop or hoops if you will um so um just share with me if you will how long how many years did your dad tour she uh touring since about 1927 um he actually started in vaudeville at age 11 and that would have been 1922 <clears throat> Uh, the piece you just saw was uh, CBC uh, television was doing a special on uh, Halloween. And so it was like, you know, 1970. And uh, there was quite an interest in the occult, especially with the uh, hippie movement or whatever. And so he did a series of of uh, sort of ghostly uh, uh, experiences and, you know, completely surrounded by the cameras and, and all. So it was uh, it was quite something for those days. He also used to use it in nightclub shows. You know, where um, you'd have the dancing Hank jumping in and out of the bottle. Usually would start with a floating table, then take the table and do um, uh, the dancing handkerchief, which was named Katie King. Fantastic. Your dad also, if I'm not mistaken, was one of the first, maybe the first, to do the costume change with metamorphosis, the substitution trunk. Is that correct? Uh, well, as far as I know, uh, he he. It was way back in 1940, I think it was 48 or 49. Um, you know, he used to do the, the trunk escape, but just would exchange with, uh, you know, his his wife or one of the assistants. But um, um, Velcro wasn't uh, a known, <laughs> very well known back then. And he was able to uh, change into, you know, from a black tuxedo into a white uh, palm uh, beach suit and uh or or a white tux if if uh if you couldn't find the other and um uh you know I, I know even magicians thought he had to be a twin because it was done so quickly you know the uh um my mother would be you know put in the trunk and you know tied in, into a bag and and that and then um uh he'd go into the cabinet which went around the trunk count one two my mother would pop out and say three They'd open it up, and by the time they had opened the trunk or removed the ropes, opened the trunk, my dad would come out in a in a um, a white suit instead of the black one. Fantastic! And, uh, 
uh, just just amazing. And uh, as this series, my series continues, uh, hopefully you'll, you have agreed. But again, I'm thankful for that. We'll share more illusions that uh, Mandrake, the great Mandrake, the original Mandrake, the magician, has done. Um, you're a mentalist in your own right, or a mind reader, if you will. How can people contact you? Uh, well, I have a website, um, leonmandrake.com. And here's the book. You didn't think you were going to get away with uh, not mentioning the book. This is one that you and your wife, Linda, have written. And I'm I'm so grateful because it's a part of history. For me, it makes history come alive, really, the history of magic. It's chock full. Yes, I said chock full of amazing pictures of your dad and uh, pretty much a history of his life and the times. So for that alone, um, it's it's worth buying. I mean, it's it's priceless. It's not expensive, even though it's priceless. And can people get it on Amazon or where can they find this? I, I, I think so. Uh, uh, Amazon, uh, eBay, I know there's uh, several copies on eBay, or you could contact me directly and I could... Uh, uh, you know, send it, send it. Excellent. Yeah. Thank it, you. It, it, it is, yeah. as you say, it is chock full of uh, photos that I don't think are, I mean, I, I don't think many people have, have ever seen them before because, uh, you know, we're going back in, into the 1930s and 40s with these. Yes, it's so that's magical in itself. Besides the actual magic that Mandrake did on stage um, with your mom, he had a different assistant before, and then uh, there was Velvet. I had the pleasure of meeting uh, your mom, um, whose stage name was Velvet, some years ago, and she was just as gracious in person as she was on stage, graceful and um, just wonderful. Thank you so much for agreeing to come on this show and sharing your dad's magic with us, uh, Lon. Yeah, it's, it's my pleasure. And I, I've, I've, I've been enjoying the other uh, performers here as well. Uh, it's nice to see, you know, a variety of, of talent. Um, I tended to specialize. So when I see other kinds of performance, I'm, I'm just as baffled as any, any other person would ever be. Fantastic. Let's put our hands once again together for the great, you are great, Lon. I know I'm I'm embarrassing you, but let's hear it for Lon Mandrake. Thank you, Lon. Well, besides all our live entertainers, we we still have a couple on on uh, videotape. Does, do people say videotape anymore? Regardless, this is a seasoned professional. He was on our last show last month in person, um, doing his own magic. And he was gracious enough, and I'm so thankful that he's allowed us to show what we're going to show in a few seconds. And that's one of his live performances, um, a venue with folks. And I think you'll agree he's very entertaining and he's very mystifying as well. Let's let's put our hands together for the great, they're all great, Ray Rock. Is that better now? <laughs> a little too loud? Is that okay? Is that okay in the back? Okay, so we start over again. You don't know where coat hangers come from, and nobody here really cares. I'm going to tell you where they come from. They come from my house. I raise coat hangers. And I brought along three of my best breeders. I've had them ever since they're a little paper clip. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got three of my beauties here. I'm going to count them out for you. One, two, and three now. Aren't they beautiful? Each and every one of them, each and every one of them is exactly alike. 
and especially this one here. <laughs> okay, how many of you guys have come out of the closet? Wait a minute. <laughs> how many times have you guys gone into the closet just to take out one solitary coat hanger? But of course you come up with two of them, they're hopelessly tangled together. Nice. It doesn't seem to matter how much you shake, it doesn't matter how much you tug, you'll never get those little puppies apart. And then when you least expect it, they seem to melt. <laughs> I know what's happened to everybody here, so allow me to show you why. It's because each and every coat hanger does have a soft spot. It does have a soft spot, it's right about there. If you watch closely, you'll see they blink, just like that. See that? And once again, no matter how much I shake, no matter how much I tug, never get those puffs apart. But watch, on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> You ever have one of those days when everything kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of gangs up on you? <laughs> After a while, you feel like you're on a chain gang. <laughs> now, if you think that's impressive, look at this. One on three. I mean, three on one. <laughs> or better yet, one on three. <laughs> I'm a little too fast for this crowd. Huh? <laughs> yeah, let me show you how we get these little pups to farm. Absolutely no problem. All I have to do is find a soft spot. I know exactly where it is. It's uh, right there. <laughs> Just take a second, watch it close to the pops right up. See? There's two left on there. Watch it one at a time. Out they come. Look at this. Watch this one. Oh boy. Oh boy. Watch this. <laughs> now the last one you see, what you should do is swing them gently back and forth, and no, I won't do that. <laughs> and like rings of smoke, they're going to melt apart. Watch this. Oh, I tell you, this is fantastic. <laughs> At this point, a lot of magicians revert to finesse. <laughs> I'm a magician, I can do this. Look at this. All I do is take my fingers, give a little snap, it pops right off, and that's the end of that trick. The old hanger trick, it's just, oh, that's good. <laughs> doing this and it's fun to do and, and I want you all to, to kind of participate if you don't mind. How many of you know that if I have my hand out like this and I want to turn it over, I can have it face up. See? But there's a way of doing this without turning the wrist. I don't know if any of you are familiar with this. I'm going to teach you how to do it. Everybody has to do what I do. Okay? Hand out like this. You should see it from here. <laughs> and then go like this. Okay? Go like this. Go like this. Go like this, and go like this, and the hand is right way up. Let's do it again, because some of you made up. Let's try it one more time. Remember now, hand face down, and we want to end up like this, so hand like this, go 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 like this, and your hand face up, right? Are you impressed? Leave your hand up there, I'm not finished yet. Okay, get your hand, put it up like that. And I take this one here and put it like that. And this one like this. And give yourself a hug because you're such a wonderful audience. <laughs> uh, I'd like to do a rub trick for you. Um, this is a trick I got from my grandfather. I can still remember his last words. He says, get your foot off the oxygen hose, you can have the damn <laughs> Not only that, but this is my mother-in-law's favorite trick. She was wonderful. She lived with us until she was 101. 
She worked in the garden from dawn till dusk and, and never once, never once complained about the leg irons. <laughs> <laughs> She never used glasses, she drank straight from the bottle. <laughs> there are three of her husbands, two of them are taking a nap. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> 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 the rope trick, eh? Okay, here we go. I have three pieces of rope all the same length, but to perform this miracle, what I need is three pieces of rope all different lengths. See? Ooh. Oh. You know, these have names. This here's the good one. See that little one? That's the bad one. This here's the ugly one. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> She's the short one. <laughs> yeah. Now we have three ropes. They're all different lengths. A fantastic trick. If I was any good at this, I should be able to take my hand, drag it down here, something like that, and make these here ropes all the same length. Something like that. Wow. <laughs> 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 yes, three pieces of rope. Now don't worry, I'm on a diet, I'm trying to get down to my original weight, eight pounds. I got two pieces of rope and I changed my mind, I only want one about that long. Wow. Okay, I'm going to take this, I'm going to just take the ropes here and, and uh, unfortunately the ends come off. <laughs> Damn, now I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I, that, that gives me a rope with a, a, a middle and no end, which is, makes this trick almost impossible. But absolutely no problem. What I'll do is go back in the pocket, get some hands, put them on there. Look at that. Nice. Okay, this works for static electricity. Look, if you give a little rub here, a little rub here, look at this before your very eyes, we end up with a rope with a middle and no ends. But hey, I'm a professional. I brought them on extra ends. There they are. Aren't they good? Yeah, look at that. Eh? See, all we have to do is put them right back on the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> used to work in a strip joint. Oh. <laughs> uh, a little bit of a problem with this trick. Sometimes, like I said, the ends come off, but you can do it just throw them right back on like that. Nice. Are you guys paying attention? <laughs> okay. Now, sometimes I have run into difficulties because what happens sometimes is what the middle comes off. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> the middle comes off, absolutely no problem. I'll take the middle and, and I'll just uh, put it right back together again like that. Wow. wow. <laughs> some ends there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the ends and put them in my pocket. And if you watch closely, I can come right back up to the end, middle here and uh, that's the end of that. Wow. I'm going to tie this rope in a knot without letting go of the ends. I know some of you think it's impossible, but I'm going to do it for you. Look at this. You go here, from here, over to here, over to here. Look at this. We're going to have a knot. And I have not let go of the ends. And I'm going to show you that this is, can be happened. Anybody can do this. Watch this. Look at this. It goes from here, over to here, over to here. And you take the ends, stand up, turn around. I haven't let go. Take the other one. Now, now slowly show everybody that you have a knot in there. Wow. Round of applause. At least you know what happens when you get a, your shoelace, you know, you're making a, you know, tie your shoelaces and you get the tag ends in there, and next thing you know, have a knot, like something like that. And there's all kinds of knots, folks. There's a wood knot, a good knot, a <laughs> short <Sure> knot. <laughs> this is a half knot, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Ray Rock. Uh, if Ray is in the audience, I believe he's in our virtual audience. Let's just speak briefly if we can. We'll uh, bring up Ray. There you are, Ray. How are you this day? Yeah, I'm very good. Um, that, yeah, that was fun to watch. <laughs> that was fun. That was great fun. There's one, there's one line I used there where I kind of messed up, but it wasn't something the audience would notice because 
in the grand scheme of things, as long as you keep moving and you don't take anything too seriously. But there's a point there with the coat hangers where you say I've got uh, a one on three and and it was backwards. It, like I have to say is like there's three on one and then better yet is one on three. But it's such a small little thing. And, and, and it just goes to show you if you're doing a show and if you're having a good time and the audience is having a good time, even if you miss a line or even make even a little bit of a mistake, most times it's just carry on and enjoy it because they enjoy it. And, and uh, it was fun. I did this for uh, Victoria Magic Club at a tricky, uh, tricky Tuesday thing. This was probably March, early March this year. And, um, and it turned out pretty good. I was quite happy with it. Awesome. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. If people want to reach you, how can they? It's um, an email, rockmagic at telus.net. That's R-O-C-H, magic, M-A-H, you know, magic at telus.net. Wonderful. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Program And it's uh, very, very interesting. And uh, thanks for having me. Oh, you're yeah. most welcome. Thank you for agreeing to come on. Maybe hit your mute now as we say goodbye to you so there's no feedback. And let's put our hands together one more time for the amazing Ray Rock. Yay. He's one of my very favorite entertainers. There's a pro um, who's uh, who's worked many, many years as well. And here's another pro coming up, although I know he'd object to me calling him a pro. He's still a pro. He's very smooth. And I'm very, very thankful to call him a friend. I know him through this amazing community, through the Tuesday Night Magic Theater and the Wednesday um, Open Mic Magic Show as well. Let's put our hands together right here and right now for George Edward Nigma Smith. Good evening, everyone. I feel I've been stitched up a little bit tonight because I've got to follow those two acts. So, talking about Mandrake the Magician, I, I'm a huge fan of the first effect he did. I believe I'm allowed to say it now because his son said it was uh, the Dancing Hag. Huge fan of that. And everyone knows the fact the uh, metamorphosis trick is one of my favourite illusions. So I've got to follow that, and also I've got to follow Ray. So I feel I've been stitched up a little bit, because I'm just going to do a card trick. However, I do need someone to help me. Kevin, could you put someone up to help me, please? Uh, Bill? Uh, I've just unmuted you, Bill. I can't... Uh, Micah... Oh, Micah, there something. we go. You wanted Micah in particular. There we are. Micah's got unmuted there. Micah for ages. But Bill would be fine. But if Micah's there, I don't, I don't really mind. Yeah, Micah's there. Micah, hello. George, miss you, man. Love you. How are you? I miss you as well, buddy. I only ask for you, only because I've not seen you for ages. Way too long. Um... I've got. To, do you understand why I've got to follow? No. Oh, yeah. No. You're gonna. You're gonna kill it, George. You're, you always do. You're gonna kill it, Micah. I'm gonna do a trick for you. All I need for you. I'd normally get you to click a card. You can't hear me because we're on Zoom. That's the rule. I'm gonna just get you to say stop for me. Stop. There. Yes, please. More or less, or dead on there. I don't need to wake up in the morning going. What if I've done one more? <laughs> uh, right on there, man. That's perfect. Right Thank you, brother. Okay. Yeah. We're going to use the Four of Diamonds. Micah. Yeah. Magicians normally ask other people to sign a card, correct? Correct. I can't get you to sign a card. But we're going to make okay. this Four of Diamonds unique. What I need for you, what I'm going to ask you to do is you're going to pick a word, any word, to make it now, so there are 900,000 words in the English language. Michael, where are you from? I can't remember exactly in America. Oh, I live in California, not far from Los Angeles. Okay, so there's 900,000 in the English language in California, probably 750,000. Right, yes, that's more <laughs> accurate. Correct. <laughs> what I need is just a word from you to make it unique. Uh, you know what? I want you to write George. Write George. George. 
Yeah. You know how to make me feel special, my friend. <laughs> So that's good, yeah? Perfect. Yep, that's perfect. You didn't know, you didn't know what we are going to do tonight. That's probably not the only four of diamonds in the world that has George on, knowing magicians. Okay. For our, but purposes, it... for our purposes, it's unique because I didn't know it was going to happen. Have, yeah, you yeah. Ever seen, have you ever seen a trick where a magician puts a card into, remember your card? Yeah, okay, magician. got it. They put the card into the middle of the deck. They click their fingers like this. They do a magic wave and it comes to the top. Did you see that before? I would love to see it again. I mean, I can't do that trick, obviously. Oh, oh fair, fair enough, fair enough. Okay. No, I'm, 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 no, I'm, joking, I'm joking. Of course I can. I can click my fingers, do a magic wave, and it does come to the top. <laughs> Very so, nice. Let's we'll take one, we'll one more toy. Please. I take it and I put it into the middle. Yeah. Wave and click and it comes to the top. <laughs> Beautiful. So, Beautiful. So all I'm going to say, we can even do it a little bit easier for you. I'll push it forward. I'll leave it sticking out. Yeah. 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 I'm going to push it in. And I'm push it in here. You may be able to see that right now. But maybe uh, not. Wait a minute, George. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe maybe you haven't seen that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do. I'm going to attempt. I'm going. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to try and do something slightly different. Okay. Believe it or not, my friend. I've been booked for some kids shows recently, which is not something I normally do, as you know. Right, right. But I have some balloons left over. So I'm... Uh... Four balloons there. We're going to try this. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if it works. Pick a number between one and four. Three. Three. One, two, three, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell, I'll tell you what. I'm going to try and put the balloons, the, the yeah, cards into the balloons. The president ever was when President Andrew really? Biden was sacked. <laughs> I don't have the puff I used to. <laughs> None of us do, man. Let's try. This might take me a couple of tries. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to... Excuse me. <laughs> but you know, do you, Micah? That's that's amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna um, let's get rid of those balloons. I'm gonna just reposition myself slightly. Can you still see? Yeah. Yeah, Mike. Oh yeah. You know they say. Oh, I'll get back. Yeah, yeah that's right. right. Let your card come to the top. I'm going to do yeah. it again in the balloon. Wow. Okay. You ready? <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> my name is uh george edward nigma thank you very very much that's me for tonight i hope you enjoy the rest of the show everyone has been amazing as well fyi and thank you Mike, for helping me dude beautiful 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 <laughs> fantastic george edward nigma smith let's put our hands together once again for him I have to tell you, George, that's one of my favorite routines. I love, and we call it as magicians, an ambitious card because it's always rising to the top. And you've succeeded in combining it with another uh, routine as well, which is equally mystifying. I, I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. When did you first start in magic? 
Well, I mean, if, that's, that's a difficult question for most magicians, isn't it? Did we all start with our Paul Daniels magic set? Or did we all start on our first gig? Or did we all start the last couple of years when I turned pro? I would say my first paid gig when I... I'm 38 years old now. My first proper professional gig was when I was 16. Real life kind of got in the way. I went to university. I worked in inverted commas, real jobs. I do the inverted commas there. Like I, I went to insurance and stuff for 20 years. I, I've i become pro the last sort of two years. Awesome. So it awesome. Depends, it depends how you want to define a magician, a magician I guess. But most of my life, I've been doing magic. Your sleight of hand is impeccable. It's it's really good. As a professional magician, I'm watching for certain things. And regular people, they'll never see really what's going on behind the scenes. And, and that's uh, from a technician's point of view, from a magician's point of view, just amazing. But in the end, it's the effect. It's what comes across to the magician, to a regular audience. And you are indeed an entertainer. I I, I have to tell you that. I, I don't mean to uh, embarrass you. I hope I'm not. But um, you're a true entertainer, George. How can people get in touch with you if they want to book you for something? My, my website is uh, magicofgeorge.co.uk. You can get on that. Thanks. My stage name is George Edward Nigma or George Enigma. That's a that's a for for, for Batman fans in the audience. Um, so my norm, my name, my real name is George Edward Smith. But when I was at university, like when I so when I was at university, I used to do card tricks at bars and stuff just to get free drinks. Um, and they always used to call me the Riddler as a nickname, which has over the years become kind of my stage name. Very cool. Very, very cool. I caught that the first time we met. And you said you were George Edward Nigma Smith. And I thought, that sounds an awful lot like the Riddler's yeah. name or part of it. And and, and sure enough, uh, it was. So thank you once again. Hopefully you'll come back to our show when you um, when you see fit. Not when we ask you, but when you decide, yeah. yes, Michael, I'm coming on your show, whether you like it or not. And it's like, no, we love you. Of course we want you on our show. So thank you yeah. once again. It's been a real pleasure for me to talk tonight as well because I can follow Mandrake and Ray was cool for me, like as, as my own personal thing. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Be well. Thank you once again, George Edward Nigma Smith. Let's put our hands together for him. We have next up um, someone I'm excited to present to all of you. You've seen him as well on the Tuesday Night Magic Theater show on Tuesdays, on the Wednesday Open Mic Magic uh, show. Um, he's um, quite the regular there, and he's our mate. Let's go watch John Greenwood, otherwise known as John the Great. I'm John the Great and I'm your mate and today I'm going to show you some magic with this clear tube. As you can see the tube is completely empty and what we're going to do is we're going to put three handkerchiefs in there representing the colours of the traffic light. Okay so the green traffic light is go so we'll put the first green handkerchief in there and then the second handkerchief is yellow and that represents wait or slow down right and then we're going to put in the last handkerchief which is obviously the red one and this means stop and basically once all three handkerchiefs are in they're going to stick to Together. Oh dear. Oh dear. That didn't quite work, did it? So what we'll do is we'll put them in again. Okay? Oh dear. This isn't going too well this. So we'll put the green handkerchief in first. Okay? We'll put the yellow handkerchief in 
next and now we'll finish off by putting the red handkerchief in last and now all the three handkerchiefs will hopefully stick together and what we do is we give it one big blow oh dear oh dear this is not going too well okay third time lucky okay we'll try this one more time okay we put the green handkerchief in okay we put the yellow handkerchief in and then we'll finish off oh dear me which isn't going well so we'll put the green handkerchief in first like that okay that is it in like that okay we'll hold the end so it doesn't come out and then what we'll do is we'll put the yellow handkerchief in next okay and then what we'll do like i say the idea of this trick is to get all the handkerchiefs to stick together like magic at the end okay so this now that they're all in this didn't actually work last time and the reason it didn't work was because we didn't share the magic words so let's count to three one two three bing bang oh dear me they keep coming out by themselves so what we'll do is we'll try this one more time okay this is the last go okay if this doesn't work we stop the video and we call it quits okay so we'll put the green handkerchief in first like that okay and then We'll take the yellow handkerchief and put that in next. Like so. Okay. And um, what you'll find is these will eventually all stick together. Okay. So we put in the yellow handkerchief like that. Okay. And like I say, we'll just hold the end so it don't come out and that will take the red handkerchief just fold it up a little bit so it goes in a bit better okay and then we'll say the magic words and they should all come out attached okay are we ready Let's count to three. No funny business. One, two, three. And all the silks have stuck together by magic. John the Great, he's our mate. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, John. Um, we're going to move on. To one of my favorite entertainers, he hails from New York City. He's New York City's premier mentalist, mind reader. And let's put our hands together for my pal, my friend, Tommy Burnett. Hey, everyone. Thank you. That was a wonderful introduction, and I really appreciate it. I'm very honored to be a part of the show. Um, I was hoping that we could get um, Sarah, Michaela, and, and Don to help me out here. So, um, wonderful. Yay. The whole thing. Oh, is Don still there? Or? He went upstairs. Oh, if you need him, I can. Oh, no, it's all right. It's all right. I saw him there. I, I figured we could get three for the price of two. But oh. two is fine. Two is fine. His loss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Now, I can't remember if I kind of showed this here before, but 
It's not going to matter because I'm doing it slightly differently today. So, but uh, I have three bags here. A purple bag that has embroidery on it, a blue velvet bag, and a burlap or jute bag. Each one is different on the outside, and each one contains something different on the inside. Very important here. So, we'll, why don't we start with uh, Michaela. Michaela, call out any, any bag, the purple, the blue, or the tan? Purple. Purple. Are you happy with that, or do you want to change? I'm happy with that. Okay, so we'll get rid of these two here, and we will use the one that you chose, okay? Now, inside this bag, oh, by the way, there's an envelope here that just says just an idea. It's not what people call a suggestion, because I'm actually not that clever to be able to <laughs> predict the future, but, but, but maybe I might have an idea, okay? Um, and we're going to untie this bag and find out what we have inside. <laughs> you may already know, you may already have guessed what we have inside, but we have yep. two, two sets of uh, mm -hmm. pendulums. And a pendulum, let me come back up here. A pendulum is used basically like this, and is used, it can be used pretty much for any divination purposes, but many times you can use this to find something that's lost by asking it, um, well first you have to get it in tune by saying, show me, show me yes, show me yes. And you'll see it in my case, it's going back and forth, making, making a straight line. But if yeah. I say, show me no, it will start to slow down, show me no, and then it will start going in a circle without me having to do anything. And if, if you were with me right now, I can, I can show you that you can do this too. In fact, mm -hmm. If you have a a washer and, and a ribbon or a washer and a string or a ring and a string, mm -hmm. you can try this at home and just uh, calibrate, calibrate it by asking somebody yes and somebody no. Now, we're going to be doing something a little different, but we will be using all 10 uh, pendulum. Each one is slightly different from one another. We have uh, on my left we have um, the tiger's eye, uh, turquoise, jasper, uh, 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 smoky quartz, and a milky quartz. On my right we have an onyx. We have a um, I forget what this is called. It's not a sapphire, but for now, this is called a sapphire. It's not mm -hmm. Um And we have a rose quartz, an opal, and some amber over here. Okay. So, McKenna, you chose the bags. Um, Cheryl, would you like to use the set on my left or the set on my right? It's really up for you. The right. You want to use this one? Yes. Okay, you don't want to change your mind. You're happy with using this set here? Yes. Okay. I, I, I'm not asking you to change because I think you're dumb, okay? I'm asking you to change because I want this to be as fair as possible, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know my ex used to hate my... I said, do you want to change your mind? Um, and, and that's why, that's partly why she's my ex, but, uh, <laughs> because she didn't, <laughs> like, she didn't like me asking, would you like to change your mind all the time? Um, uh, so, 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for laughing. It's, uh, it was a joke. It was, my, my ex is not my ex because of that. But um, keep in mind that this idea is going to stay right here. Um, so let's go back to McKenna. We have five objects here. Uh, does anyone call out to you? The, um, what is this? This is the uh, onyx, the sapphire, the red quartz, the opal, or the amber. Does anyone call out to you? The opal. The opal. And you're happy if we, if we stay with the opal? Yes. Now, you guys, you made all the decisions. And I didn't use any fancy language to make you land on, on any of these. We started with three bags. If, if you would have picked the blue bag, for example, the blue bag is filled with, um, with runes, which are Viking, Viking letters, and we would have done something okay. else with those, something else completely. If, if, if you would have picked the, the blue bag, this contains some black slates and some salt, um, and we would have done something else. But you saw uh -huh. the purple bag, which contains 10 different pendulums, and we ended up on the opal. And this is very important because you could have chosen any one of the uh, penguins, but you stop on the opal, and that is exactly what I wrote oh. on this piece of paper, and there was nothing oh. else in the envelope. It is not a double-sided envelope either. I will actually open this up and give some magician tips on using a double-sided envelope. I am not oh, wow. what you see is what you get. Thank you so much. And Amazing. Now, and now let's go back to Michael. That is awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, my dears. You guys look good. Thank you, Cheryl and Michaela. And thank you, Tommy. What um, what a treat. It's always a treat to watch you. Uh, I'm so thankful you agreed to come on my show all together. And you've done one of my, I love all your stuff, but <laughs> most recently it's one of my favorite effects um, that I've seen you do. I love the colors. I love the whole energy behind it all. And um, um, I, I really, I don't think I've ever asked you how long you've been into magic. How old were you when you started? Well, I've been doing it all, about the same amount of time as Donovan. I started out when I was about, I was about six. I did my first full magic show when I was six for a room of lawyers who my mother, wow. my mother thought, um, yeah, I was gonna bomb, and they they loved it. They they were literally full. I um, my memory of it is that um, I wasn't that good, but apparently apparently I was better than I thought. And um, uh, my my father was an actor, my mother was a dancer, my younger brother is a a uh, French horn player, so the whole family is. Uh, drenched in theater, and uh, uh, yeah, so it's um, been a pretty amazing ride for me. Awesome, awesome. I think you know, as magicians or performers in general. Um, we tend to think we're not that good, and sometimes we'll we'll do a presentation somewhere, or a concert, or a show, and we'll think, oh, you know, I bombed. The audience hated it, but really, they loved it. And how many times? I I know you'll agree with this. How many times you've had friends or or whoever in uh, an audience, and you'll go to them afterwards and go, oh, I did an awful job, and they'll go, no, you didn't. You did really well. I don't know why. It's sometimes like that. I remember when I used to do many shows a year, there'd be like one or two shows where, where I felt off. I, I thought I did a horrible job, but apparently the audience didn't think I did. So uh, it's maybe subjective. I, I don't know what that is, but um, 
Um, your love of mentalism. Have you always done mentalism or have you also done regular magic? I actually started, well, I started out doing um, card tricks. And then um, until I was about 12, and I got into um, escapology. And I did that until I was 25 or so. Um, and then from there, I did stage, like comedy stage magic. And then it's only been in the last 25 years or so, I've been mostly doing mentalism and creating mentalism. Mentalism is, I'm very partial to it as well. Um, it's, it's been my favorite and one that I now perform professionally as well. I, I was influenced by the amazing Kreskin when I was 14. Yeah. I know you had, you've seen his show in the States, probably were around the same age. I, I suspect I'm a little bit older yeah. than you. I'm, I'll be 68 if Sue lets me, if my wife lets me. But, <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm like five years younger, so yeah, I'm right behind you. There you go. So yeah, I still love him. He's still going strong, but I used yeah. to love Ted Anneman for the magicians out there, Ted Anneman. And uh, uh, I forget the guy that used to refer to his stuff as brain busters, maybe Melbourne Christopher. I'm not sure. I forget who else, but oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I love mentalism, mind reading and uh, people can catch you every week every week on the on the show that actually you created you started called the tuesday i don't know if it was called that when you created it at first i understand it went through uh different yeah, names it used to be called um uh virtual interactive virtual interactive wow yeah so, yeah um it, it was a very complex name i i didn't i didn't like it so i it changed it to another complex name, um, <laughs> Tuesday Night Magic Theater. But it, it seems to roll off the tongue a little bit better, I think. So, yeah. It does. It, it does. Fun. Tuesday Night Magic Theater. Uh, also, Open Mic Magic on the Wednesdays. Most people can catch you most times there as well. But you also, and I see you've pop that up there for all of us you know i was going to ask you for your contact info this is where people can reach you and you don't you have a site well that's more for the magicians um okay. yeah. there it is the magic taboo yeah the magic taboo.com and i mean even if you're not a magician if if you know somebody who's a magician and you want to buy them a, un a unique gift uh the stuff on my site you won't find on any other any other site because it's, it's um, all mine. So um, came out of, came out of here. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's good, but but <laughs> I I think it is. So it is. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. I have yet to order an illusion of yours called um, the Horn Book. Mm -hmm. um, you'll know what I'm talking about. Some of the magicians out there will know as well. Believe me, that's coming soon. I, I've had other priorities, but I love that effect. I think it suits my style as well. And as far as I know, you've created it. So it makes it that much more special in my mind. Tommy Burnett, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join us this day. Be well, and we'll see you soon. Yeah. There we go. Well, I, I don't believe we're coming close to uh, to the end of our show. Um, I want to present to you a person who, well, he is the Open Mic Magic Show. Um, and he is with, together with Robina, the Tuesday Night Magic Theater, um, coincidentally Tuesdays. And um, he is our techie. To call him a techie, I, I don't feel that's enough, really, because he does so much for the show. If, um, if put it this way, if we didn't have him, there wouldn't be a show. He does the technical stuff that either I don't have time to do, I can't do, or I have no knowledge of, um, to be honest. And he's also one of the UK's most gifted mentalists. So I'd like to present to all of you, let's welcome to our virtual stage, the amazing Kevin Peel. 
I'm not sure who we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. It's you, Kev. What? Right. Okay. No, thank you ever so much, uh, Dr. Michael. I'm in, uh, I'm in awe of uh, myself now. <laughs> right. Before we started, I pre-selected a load of people. Some people didn't need to know they're going to be pre-selected because they hadn't arrived. And a couple said, yeah, I will as well. So I'm going to bring in uh, one at a time very quickly. So we we did this, some of it in advance and some of them, we just selected you uh, so that it didn't take too long when we got the show going. So where is Paul? There we go, Paul Abbey. Uh, we've also got the uh, better half of the uh, Dr. Michael Likey and family duo, <laughs> uh, oh, which is, uh, <laughs> which is Sue. <laughs> Uh, and we have over in the UK, we have Jill. And back in the USA, we have Cheryl and Michaela. There we go. That is our, wow. our quorum now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, excellent. Okay, this is something that uh, I do on my stage show that I'm working on. So uh, I gave you as much practice of it as possible. Uh, a couple of you have seen it already, so some of you won't have. Um, I think Cheryl sh shaking her head, but I think you have seen this, but never mind, we're going to see it all over again. <laughs> uh, so, it's quite difficult to do, and I need to concentrate a lot, but with your help, we will get through this. It's, as I said, it's a stage routine, not really designed to be done over Zoom, so I've modified it a little bit, and hopefully, uh, with your help, we can get this done. Uh, I have a load of uh, flashcards, and on the other side of them are different patterns. So square, a heart, a circle, a pie, a hash, lightning, a cross, triangle, a sort of starry type thing, a proper star, an arrow, squiggle, and a question mark. Okay. I'm going to put these here and give these a good wash. Uh, Jill, just tell me when to stop washing these around because I don't want to know where any of them are. Stop. In fact, if I put myself up there, you can see that I'm actually looking straight ahead. So, stop, yep? Yes. Yep. Gather those together and we will put them over, just make sure they stay in shot, over there for a while. I also have a piece of card, and uh, which will become clear what this is for in a minute. Jill, can you nominate somebody else to help me in the next bit? So I'm, I haven't been not influencing anyone. I don't know who's going to do the next bit of the selection. Dr. Michael like his wife, and I'm sorry, I can't remember her name. Oh, Sue. Okay. That's okay. Sue. Sue. Yeah. Uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different positions, and there are six of you. I want you to put a name to each one in any order you like. So oh. should we start at the left or we can hop around? It's up to you, it doesn't matter. But, uh... Okay, we'll start on your left with yeah. Jill. we say who? With Jill. Yeah. And then Cheryl. Yeah. And Paul. Yeah. And Donovan. Hi, Donovan. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, me. Me. How do you spell that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who, who did I forget? And Paul. Oh, no, we've got oh, Paul. We've got uh, Cheryl. Somebody forgot to unmute themselves there. No, we've got Michaela. Michaela. Yeah, Michaela. Michaela. All right. Yeah, we've already got Cheryl back there. Sorry, You're Michaela. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Okay. And um, Sue, I keep seeing Michael there. I've got to get my head around there. It says, it says Michael underneath you. <laughs> but it's not just Sue. Sue, uh, can you nominate somebody else? And they're going to uh, choose some of these. Hey, I'll pick Donovan. Donovan. Okay, Donovan. Uh, I can give them another wash. I can give them a, a little mix up like this as well, just to make sure that we don't know. And 
And Donovan, can you nominate one final person for the final bit? Paul. Paul. Okay. Paul, uh, we need six again. Do you want me to give you the cut to count down from six from somewhere in there? Cut, uh, cut the whole deck in half once. One, two, three, four, about six down. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Go from there. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And uh, we, Sue, do it again. You're going to put, tell me where. To, well, actually, you told, so you can tell me where to put them. So first oh. one. Okay. Um, I can't see the names from here. So. Uh, okay. So the first one on your left, put. put That's it. Jill. Yeah. Yeah, under Jill. Yeah. And then skip one and go to the next one. Which is Paul. Yeah. yeah. And do that again. Skip and go to the next one. Which is Sue. And then beside me at the end. In fact, if I go back to the overhead, you can see better, can't you? So at the end, Michaela. Oh, Michaela. Michaela. Yeah. And then Donovan and Cheryl. Donovan and Cheryl. Okay, right. I'm going to try and do this. Possibly, if I just jam my fingers in my eyes, and you trust me that I've got my eyes closed and got my fingers in my <laughs> eyes. Uh, it's, everything's misty without my glasses anyway. So there. Does that look that look honest? We'll yes. trust you. I think that hurts we'll more than the blindfold. Oh. So. If I go and flip it from the top. Okay. Tell me when I get to the last one, because I don't know where I am. <laughs> That's the last, last one. one. That's the last one. And are they in front of your names still? Yep, yeah. all lined yes. up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay, so now really concentrate and remember your pattern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go. Got it. And... Okay, flip. Is that the next one? Yes. Yep. Flip. Next one. Yeah. Flip. Mm -hmm. Next one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Next one. Mm -hmm. and Next the last one. one. Sorry? That's the last one. That okay. is the last one. Yep, turn it over. And flip. Hold on. Yeah, all done. All done. All done. Oh, I got that. Oh, <laughs> that one that's on its own over there. Oh, no, that's just the pile, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. And again, I'll just give these another another mix up. And then what I'm going to do is stick these in in the middle one at a time. Okay, so, and just to remind you what we've done, we've uh, <laughs> given them a complete mix-up now. There is no way that anyone can absolutely even know where anything is, is there? No, nope, not um, a chance. Nope. And, and I have no clue as to what ones you've nope. selected. Okay. Right. So, here we go again. Let's go back to the front cam. Well, no, absolutely not. Be honest with me, that's not anybody's, is it? Yeah. No, I guess not. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't say anything. <laughs> but you give me, you give me, you let me know. So that is Sue. <laughs> it's somebody's. Okay, so keep a stony face. It's not mind reading. That's telling me. <laughs> so, but that's, that's so. There we go. Uh, let me just have a look. Keep a stony face. You can't, can you, Jill? That's yours, isn't it? 
It is, yes. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, let's have a look. No, that's nobody's. Ah, that somebody, somebody reacted to that. I've absolutely no idea who it was. Uh, I'm looking at you, Cheryl. Was that yours? That was mine. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my glasses are slipping. No. And again, now only answer if I talk to you. No. Now this is getting annoying. No. Ah, there we go. Somebody responded to that. That was you, Donovan. You nodded your head. That was you. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, no. No, I only got two left. This is odd, but that doesn't feel like anybody. Paul, you're 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 you're, you're grinning a little bit. So that's got to be yours. Yeah. But Michaela. Not, uh, damn. Right, Michaela, you're going to have to just sort of transmit what yours was to me mentally. So look me in the eyes and right. think, think what yours was. And uh, I'm getting quite a, quite a clear picture, something like that. Was that yours? Yes. It was. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Ah, oh, we got there in the end. Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> oh, not your fault. <laughs> oh, and we will hand this back to. Uh, let's just do this. Remove everybody. We should have done. Hang on. Why is it not doing it? Don't you just love it when the tech doesn't want? Oh, remove all spot. There we go. Yeah, um, Dr. Michael is back. There we go. That's fantastic, Kevin. Um, there we are. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were really going to do a disappearing act. But there <laughs> you are, goodness. Uh, that was worth waiting for. That was amazing. I, I thoroughly loved it. I really did. And truly. How old were you when you first started doing magic? I think, I think, and if this is so long ago, it's really difficult to remember. I think it was about 12. Very good. Uh, yeah. With the, always, uh, the, did you the always, famous magic box. <laughs> oh, sure. Did you always love mentalism as well? Or did you? No, <laughs> no. It was only uh, within the law. I mean, mentalism, my spark was Darren Brown. Yes. And that just sort of thought, oh, yes, no, that's the avenue I want to go down. And so, uh, so I was a, a master of all trades and, uh, well, I was a, you know, practitioner of all trades and then master of another one. So I thought I've got to have a, a niche that I'm good at. Um, hopeless with coins. I'm getting Great. better with cards, but I love mentalism. <laughs> yes. Same. I, I actually prefer, uh, cards to coins. Um, mm. But ironically, our magic club on Tuesday night, the theme is coins, and I'll probably <laughs> use poker chips or something instead. But we'll we'll see. And um, if people want to contact you, Kev, for bookings or whatever, how can they? Well, I think if you go to Google and just put Kevin Peel Magician, that should come up. Uh, in the UK, you might get a, a Labour councillor from somewhere who's also called Kevin Peel to come up as well. <laughs> oh, maybe just Kevin Peel, magician. Well. Uh, yeah. well, awesome. Thank well, you. Thank you, Michael. It's been a lovely show. It's been great fun. And thanks to you as well and all our participants. I just want to give the rundown to remind everybody again. Uh, we had Donovan from Canada. We had Paul Abbey from the UK. We had Robina from the US. Um, Mandrake, the magician from Canada. We had Roy Stone from the UK. 
We had Ray Rock from Canada, George Edward Nigma Smith from the UK, um, John the Great, John Greenwood from the UK, Tommy Burnett USA, and last but certainly not least, Kevin Peel from the UK as well. And I want to thank all of you out there as well for joining us. We're here the first Friday of the month. I don't think I could do this every Friday. I don't think I could do this every week. I'd probably um, uh, kind of go by the wayside, so to speak. But um, I'm thankful at least enough to um, to have you guys join us the first Friday of every month. Um, and um, I want to thank as well our Facebook audience. If they've if they've sat through this, fantastic. We'll give a wave to them as well. I see, Kevin, I've borrowed from your book. There we go, because we do want to thank, we do want to thank our Facebook audience uh, for joining us. And most of all, all of you out there, not just in our virtual audience, but all of you out there. We'll see you all next time on the first Friday of the month. We'll see you soon.